Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic the geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Hi, I'm Brady Forrest. And I'm Brady Pettis. And we started Ignite back in 2006. We were mourning the fact that there wasn't a night where we could go out and hang out with geeks in Seattle. So we started Ignite, and it turned out to be a lot of fun. And now it's traveled all around the world. You can go to Ignite pretty much everywhere. And if not, you can start one. We're going to bring you a new talk each week. This week's talk was done by Jason Grigsby at Ignite New York City. It's about the creation of Cup and Noodle and how you can apply lessons from that to our everyday lives and projects and startups. Enjoy the show. All right, so I'm here to talk about cup noodle, and I know what you're thinking. Why talk about an unhealthy food in a styrofoam container? Well, three reasons. There are great lessons for startups. Um, it was captured in a Japanese comic book, and it takes less time to cook than an Ignite presentation. All right, so in 1970s, Nissan Foods is facing a financial crisis. The president wants to, um, wants to figure out how to address that, so he wants to expand into America, but Americans don't have donburi bowls to cook ramen in. So he brings in a team of people, he says, I want you to create a product. This product is going to um, contain ramen. It, all it needs is water, cooks in three minutes. You know, you can carry it around anywhere. Easy, right? Well, nothing like this had ever been done before. In fact, if it weren't for the, for the um, and this brings about the first lesson, which is compelling vision and passionate leadership. If the president didn't have this, there's no way this product would have ever been created. And because he was so passionate about it, the team actually took on the challenge. They embraced the constraints that were given to them. And there's something really amazing about embracing constraints. Um, they didn't go back to the president and say, you know, I don't know, not three minutes, we need four minutes. And then instead they said, okay, we'll do it. Sort of like a five minute presentation. Um, so the first challenge they had was they had to come up with the container design. And the container design had to be something that people could carry with them. It had to be something that wouldn't scald them, something that kids could use, that old adults could use. And the way that they came to the container design was they did thousands and thousands of different containers using many, many different materials. And this is iterative design process. And I love this description of ideas piled upon ideas and how this creates really great products. And after thousands of these designs, they actually created something that now we don't consider very extraordinary, but at the time was absolutely revolutionary. But this was just the first challenge. The second challenge was that they had to come up, um, they had to come up with toppings. The president said, I want meat, I want vegetables. They need to cook in three, sec in three minutes as well. And none of the food drying techniques of the time could actually do this. So how did they solve the problem? They use freeze drying. And, and I love this, right? Because only in Japanese culture and Japanese comic books would you get this with the lightning behind it and, and all this sort of stuff. Like, this is a minor moment, but like, it, it's just, it's great. Um, and he, Ahana-san actually was trained in food chemistry. That's how he knew how to do it. But his food chemistry background didn't help him with finding red shrimp. And that was the next challenge that he had. And the president wanted red shrimp because it was a delicacy in Japan. So he was trying to think of all the different ways, and he looked all over, but he limited himself. And when he finally opened up his mind, he found the red shrimp in a shrimp cocktail. And I love this sort of, this Obi-Wan sort of statement, this is the red shrimp I've been looking for. Uh, so 2,600 different types of shrimp. Now the next challenge was that the, the noodles weren't actually cooking all the way through. Um, they were either burning on the outside or they were, they were raw on the inside, and they had to figure out a way to address that. So, um, the way that they ended up doing this was actually something really simple. They, they realized that if they suspended the noodles in the container and they let the hot water boil through the bottom and let the convection go up through the noodles, that it would actually cook all the way through. So now that they had the noodles, they had the product, they actually went to try to sell it. And like any revolutionary product, they had a lot of problems. Nobody, could, nobody would believe it was um, something that would sell. They didn't believe it was food. Um, so they had to figure out a different way to, to sell the product. So they went back to their headquarters and they started thinking about it. And they realized that they were selling it incorrectly. They were selling it the same way they used to sell ramen. Um, and what they needed to do was talk about the convenience of the product. 
talk about what set it apart. And the other thing they decided to do was actually market it differently. So they went to Ginza, the shopping district in Japan, and they gave out the food for free. And after two days, they had lines around the corner. So this is the history of cup noodle. Now you know the secret of cup noodle. Um, the uh, freeze drying technique that keeps the, the toppings fresh. The way in which the cup it actually forms a container plus the way to hold the hot water, plus the way to cook, all these different things. But this isn't the really amazing part of cup noodle for me. The amazing part is that for over 40 years, cup noodle has been disaster relief food. It's the way that we address the, the problems in the USSR collapse, Katrina, the Asian tsunami. There are warehouses full of cup noodle waiting for the next disaster. And the final thing is to celebrate the small victories along the way. Whether it's finding the red shrimp or figuring out the freeze drying technique, make sure you take the time out to celebrate them. And thank you very much.